Hey everyone, Paul ISM. Welcome to part two of a Ravel 125th Chevy Chevelle video build. So hello everyone, welcome back to part two of this. This is part two of my birthday slash Christmas buddy build. Uh, this runs until the end of December, uh, so you got about a month to finish it. Um, and it's a '68 Revell for Chevelle in either the black boxing from Revell Germany or the red boxing from Revell USA. Loads of people taking part. Can't wait to see all the finished build. It's going to be epic. Uh, but this is part two of my build. So in part one, we did all the bodywork. We adjusted all the suspension to get it lowered and the wheels and what have you. Part two today, we're going to get all the chassis built up, the engine built up, assembled, painted, uh, and put in place. And in part three, we're going to come back, paint our wheels, the interior, and bring it all together and get our build done and dusted. So yes, great kit this. Highly recommend it. It's a fantastic quality kit for a Revel kit. And uh, as I keep saying, I can't wait to see all these builds. It's going to be epic. There's a few finished already. Um, and mine's not far off. And I know Joe Camarilli's very nearly done his as well, I think. So, yes, really excited to get these done. It's going to be a fun build. Another buddy build coming up in February as well for Tamiya's uh, Lexus LFA, which has just been re-released. We're going to build that in memory of Gary Pashley, who passed away last February. Uh, it was one of his favorite cars. And he was always hounding me to build it. So we're going to do that in February. If you want to take part in that, uh, I'll put some post details up a little bit nearer the time. And we'll commemorate Gary with the build of one of his favourite cars. So, yes, there we are. Anyway, enough to your chat. Let's get back on with this build. Okay, then. So, first off, we're going to deal with our chrome. We don't need all the chrome parts on this. We're not using the wheels. Uh, we've got aftermarket wheels that are already stripped of chrome, luckily. Uh, but there are a lot of parts we need to remove. Now, the chrome's not bad on the kit. isn't bad at all. But sadly, Revel in it, Infinite Wisdom still puts the uh, sprue points in place, you can see. So when you cut them off, you get a bare piece of plastic. If they could think ahead a little bit, put the pieces around the back, it would make life a lot easier. Now, my normal trick is bleach. Cheap, thick, nasty, horrible bleach. Normally takes it off in seconds. This one I've had for a while, over a year now. And it did absolutely nothing to this. So took it out of that, rinsed it off. And with a fresh bottle of bleach pilfered from the house. Um, we're going to top it back up and leave it be. And literally within a minute or so, it started to do its job. It's exactly the same bleach, but in a new bottle. Because obviously it's been a bit of a while since I bought the last one. You can see it eating away the chrome very slowly. Uh, the next step after this was to go nuclear and go for Mr. Muscle Oven Cleaner. But thankfully, this did work a little bit slower than normal. Um, but it did take the chrome off. Now, like I say, real shame because the chrome is actually pretty good. If you can't get the chrome off, spray over it with your primer of choice. And you can paint it just as good, if I'm honest. Uh, but for me, there you go. That's the way to do it. Leave it in there for a while. All the parts we need. Get them de-chromed. We can then clean them up uh, with a nice piece of tissue to get all the chrome off. We rinsed in water as well. That's an empty can there to pour away the bleach. For Christ's sake, do not drink that can. Make sure it's a crushed can or turn the ring ball around, whatever you can. Um, do not drink it and throw it away appropriately when you're done. Um, and then there's all the parts. We clean them all up, dried them off, and they are ready for clean up and then some primer. So, tough decision on the chrome. I did contemplate going with AK uh, Metal Chrome, the new stuff I bought. But opted to go with the silver plate silver, which we'll see in a little bit. Same colour used on the GTX. In the meantime, we've got the engine to build up. Um, some of these chrome components go on the engine. But the engine and block itself, the sump, um, the uh, cylinder heads and what have you, are going to be painted in the ready orange colour um, that we did on the GTX. Same colour we mixed. Uh, we're using some of the Tamiya white glue, which is the orange equivalent in Europe, I believe, to glue the halves together. Give them a good squeeze, get the glue working, and then we'll go around the seams with the Tamiya Extra Thin uh, Plastic World Mix I use, and get it glued together, clamp it up, and leave it to one side for a few hours, and let it dry. 
And here we are a few hours later, we can now cut off all the excess sprue connection points with our Tamiya side cutters <coughs> and clean up the rest with sanders. Now, I'm going to try and make a concerted effort to make my video shorter. I want all my videos around the 30 minute mark if I can now. Um, it was more of a bit of feedback I got off people on improving the video. So we're going to cut out, pardon the pun, a lot of the superfluous footage, big word, I know, um, that we don't really need. You all know how to clean parts up. And if you don't, uh, I've got a how-to video techniques guide, which I'm going to start linking in the description of the videos, uh, which shows how to build a model from start to finish. So we're using a variety of UMP sanders to clean up the seams, clean up the excess sprue points uh, where they've been attached to the sprues themselves, uh, and just get them all cleaned up and mounted ready for prime. I've covered this many times in my videos. Like I say, if you get stuck, search in the playlist, look for the Subaru Technique video build, and I show there in depth how to deal with everything. Now, we've got our iWatt HPC Plus. We've got some Mr. Hobby GX2 Gloss Black, and we are going to gloss black paint these bumpers and the chrome part. So, straight over the plastic, no primer. We want the smoothest finish we can get. This is a nice gloss black, probably one of the best gloss black paint you will get. It's thin with Mr. Hobby level and thinner, about 50-60%. Put a couple of coats down, and on your final coat, get a nice wet coat down, so you get a nice glossy finish like that. Same on the cylinder, uh, valve, oh, sorry, the cam covers, I call them valve covers, wherever you call them where you're from. Uh, just put a coat down, leave it for a minute or two to flash off, and then come back with uh, two or three coats, wherever you think it needs. As long as you've got a nice orange peel, finish, free finish at the end, you're good to go. Did that with all the other parts, and then we've got some Tamiya grey primer that's been decanted from the can. Thinned with Mr. Uh, sorry, with Tamiya lacquer thinner with retarder and uh, about what 20 percent and we're going to put a couple of coats down on the engine in preparation for paint simple uh, like i say we've all covered this primer before i don't want to show hours and hours of priming it's boring um we've let that dry for probably four or five hours now the lack of paint's dry really quick we've got that red yet uh, orange mix of tamiya lp paints <coughs> Excuse my voice, my voice is still ruined from COVID. Do apologise, but it does get a bit froggy after a while. So I believe this is LP7, and I think off the top of my head it's LP51. A bit of a 50-50 mix of uh, paints to the colour I was happy with. Um, and then we've got some silver plate next from Mr Hobby. This is sadly a colour not readily available in the UK. I got it from Europe. It is one of my favourite metal colours. It is like a dark shadow chrome color it's the exact same color we used on the gtx for the bumpers and trim and uh, we're going through the uh ump apex at about 14 psi it's been thinned with the Miss Hobby rapid thinner about 50 percent and we're going to put a couple of light coats down building it up with each coat if it needs a third coat give it but it's such a beautiful chrome it's like a dark shadow chrome it is by far one of my favorite metallic colors pigments are ultra fine and the coverage is great. The downside is this bottle of paint cost me £18 delivered. So it's not cheap. So it's definitely not one to be spilling everywhere. Um, so take your time and work your way around all the other parts. Um, some of them are done in chrome as well. I've done chrome on some of the other parts just to give it a tone of variety. Um, but for the most part, the exterior trim is the silver plate next. Got the exhaust and other parts to clean up here as well um so just get rid of the seams on these quick run over with some thinny sticks and the thinny sponge to get rid of them be careful these parts are quite easy to break so just take your time uh, and the same on the chassis as well cleaning up all the sprue points with the ump sanders our ump sanders are great quality uh they last forever if you take care of them they really do last forever and with all those parts cleaned up and mounted up we can get some primer on these. So we've got some Mr. Service of 1500 black. And we're going to prime the majority of these parts in black. In preparation for some paint. Be it LP5 or metallics. Uh, there's one or two that are going to be coloured in red. Uh, and we'll prime those in grey as we see fit. But Mr. Service of 1500 black. Fast become one of my favourite primers. Just a little bit of, on a lower tier than Tamiya. I do prefer the way the Tamiya primer sprays. Hopefully one day Tamiya will get into the 20th, uh, you know, 21st century and make a black primer. We don't know, maybe. 
but the coverage is really good on this. Don't over thin it too much. Don't try and lie down in one go because it will not work, but it really does flash off quick, especially if your modeling room's as warm as mine. Mine's normally around 23 degrees C, and you can literally see this stuff drying before your eyes. It's beautiful, um, and it just covers really well. It also makes a nice black color, like a satin matte black color. Um, so you can sometimes leave some of the parts in the color and get away with it. But yeah, great coverage. Two or three light coats will cover it easy. Same on the chassis. Do make the mistake of painting inside the actual cockpit in black when I need it to be grey really. But the engine bay is going to be black as well underneath the chassis as well. So we'll have to mask up and spray the uh, interior separate because we're going to do a flocking on that. Like I say, for the other parts, some of these parts need painting in the same colour as the engine. Should have thought ahead and done it at the same time, but we didn't. So we're going to paint them in uh, Tamiya Grey Primer. Let them dry and hit them up. So it's a two cylinder heads, the um, inlet manifold and the sump will need painting as well. And um, we've got our suspension rear shocks here, which we're going to paint in red later on. So with them done. And then on the chassis itself, I'm going to paint this in LP5. I'm going to leave the uh, so the chassis rails, I'm going to do an LP5. The chassis itself, I'm going to leave in Mr. Surface. So we've got a little bit of tonal variation between them both. LP5, thinned. 60% with uh, Tamiya Lacquer Thin and Retarda. Beautiful semi-gloss black colour. Covers really well. And we're going to do most of the rest of the running gear in this as well. So we'll do the subframes, the prop shaft, um, other parts uh, in it. And then the exhaust in that, we're going to use Mr. Hobby Super Iron uh, to get that nice exhaust colour. Another one of my favourite colours. Looks absolutely fabulous. And there it is. Do love these Miss Toby Super Metallics. They cover so, so well. I just wish to bring out a few more colours in their range. But they are slow. There's nine of them. It's about well, ten, technically, of the silver plate next. But they cover really well. <clears throat> so we do the cylinder, uh, the, sorry, what do you call them? Headers in America. We call them exhaust uh, manifolds. And the exhaust and the iron. And then I've got some... Um, I think it's the AS12 this is from Tammy. I just grabbed it out of the drawers, a random silver colour, and that'll do us. And a little trick for doing your pulley belts, uh, sorry, your belt pulleys, is use a circle template, spray the belts the colour you want them, then use the appropriate size circle template, line it up as good as you possibly can, and just spray through the colour you want your pulley. Works well, this little trick. It's nice and quick, as you'll see. Obviously, mask off any areas where you don't want anything getting painted. And there you go. Nice and simple. We'll do that for the other ones as well. These things are cheap. You can pick them up a couple of pounds off Amazon, eBay, your local art store. They have a variety of uses from tank wheels, pulleys, uh, instruments. A lot of uses. And mine's had a lot of use over the years, as you can see. It's well and truly battle-worn. There you go. It makes a nice, quick, easy job of that. And then we've got some GX Red for our suspension struts at the back, our uh, shock absorbers. So we'll spray them black, and then we'll paint the actual strut silver later on. Back over on the bench now, we've got some Tamiya L, sorry, X18. I've got the lacquers on the brain. Semi-gloss black, got the enamel range of paints from Tamiya. And we're going to brush paint our springs on the front and rear. Absolutely phenomenal paints these are. The coverage is exceptional on them. They are perfect for brush painting, but they take quite a while to dry. So it's something that needs handling. Make sure you leave them to dry for at least a few days. And even then, it's probably still going to be a little bit tacky. And then silver, we're going to paint up our transmission. Now, this shows how well these cover. They cover exceptionally well. Literally almost in one coat, I would say. This covers over the bright orange no problem at all doesn't flood all the detail you don't lose all the detail they're just that highly pigmented but i'm not using a lot of paint either i sped this section up for us that they cover really well like exceptionally well so yeah if you're looking for a new brush paint something to do detail parts with, especially on cars on areas you're not going to be handling massively or painting over or having to put masses of washes on uh, these are ideal uh, I find very uh, useful. I've got a handful of colours. I may add to that colour range uh, later on. 
But as you can see there, in one coat, covered. Absolutely brilliant paints. Very, very nice. Typical Tamiya quality. And uh, clean up of the brush is just with lacquer thinner as per normal. And then we use the same paint on the suspension on the rear, on the shock absorbers. Some careful brush painting. If you do get a little bit of excess on there because we're putting enamel over lacquer, if you're quick, you can just wipe it off. Don't lick it though, because I don't normally lick the cotton buds, but definitely don't lick it. If you wipe it off, quick, there you go, no damage. And then while we're here, we'll do the starter motor as well. So really nice paints. Um, I've had these a long time ago and got rid of them, and they are proven very useful again. You can see the beautiful color on that transmission there. So we need to assemble the engine now. So we've got our cylinder heads, they are handed, so look at the instructions, look at key points on them that are handed, and you can see which way around they go. A test fit never goes amiss, I would always recommend test fitting things. Now with some CA glue, this is the cheap stuff I've linked in my Amazon store. A couple of little dabs in the locating points, we can get it all glued together. Same on the other side. There we go, pinch them for a second. And we get in the manifold on the top. Again, it's handed. Make sure the uh, distributor hole goes at the back. The hose one at the front. Don't get them mixed up. There we go, a little bit of glue, a little bit of a squeeze gets it in there. And then the sump as well. Kind of literally clicks in place this thing. But we'll have a little bit of glue for safe uh, being anyway. A little bit of CA glue never hurt anyone. And again, these precision nibs, absolutely invaluable love having these things and there we go there's our engine mostly assembled i think this is the water pump on the front is it i think it is i don't know my v8 very well and then ht lee holes the ignition lead so i offered up the manifolds the headers just so I can see where to put the uh, ignition lead holes. I've got my little battery powered drill. Yes, there's a story to that. I'm not getting into it now. You can't buy this anywhere anymore. It was made by Micromark, Micro Detail, and you can't get it anymore at all. So, yes, if anybody asks where I got that drill from, I've no idea at all. I bought it the job lot of second hand stuff, and it's just got enough power for styrene. It's perfect. No torque at all, but it will drill through if you give it time. Like I say, I'm using the headers to line up where the ignition leads will go. I've got a 3D resin printed distributor from Luke Ward over at Scale Motor. We're just test fitting that, and then we're going to drill out the distributor cap holes. With a little drill, you can see how precise it is. And we'll wire up. Now, word of warning for those who are easily triggered, my engine's not going to be wired in the right order. Life's too short for that. This thing isn't going to run bad because it's wired up wrong. Because, surprise, surprise, it's not going to run at all. I've got no idea of the firing order. And I'm not that bothered, if I'm honest. So I'm going to attach the HT leads. I'm going to put them in in the order that's neatest for me. And that's that. So if you're triggered by that, I do apologise. But, yes, I'm not that bothered about wiring up a model motor in the correct firing order when I have absolutely no idea. I'm just here enjoying the modelling. There we go, there's our resin distributor done. Once we've got all the holes drilled out, we can give it a prime and a paint. We're going to do it in semi-gloss black. There we go. And here we are a few hours later. I chose blue for the ignition leads. So we've got a little dab of bobsmith's glue on the end of each one, leaving a piece of the applicable size hanging out. And just go around and pop all eight in, and then the coil plug in the center as well. Got these very nice snips my buddy Andy Callis gave me years ago, which are absolutely fantastic for cutting wire. Like I say, a little dab of glue in the middle. 
There you go. It's your signal I have the visor on because I'm blind as a bat. And there we go. There is our distributor wired up. Now, the downside to using the Bob Smiths is it takes a lot longer to dry, so you may find a few of them fall out, but you can always glue them back in. No bother. Uh, oil filter, I opted to paint in blue. I'm popping the decal on now. Use your decal procedure with that. And then all our pulleys are all glued in place at the front. So a little dab of glue on one mounting point. Look where the other one is. A little dab of glue in it from this side. Move it over and give it a good push together. Make sure everything's straight. Then we grab our oil filter. Glue that in place as well after dropping it on the bench. There we go. Wunderbar. And then insert our distributor in. Doesn't really need any glue. Holds itself in there great. And then I've arranged the wires roughly where I want them, making sure we've got adequate lengths to get across. And then I'm going to start from the front and work my way back. We're going to trim it to the appropriate length. And then grab our tweezers and put a 90 degree, 90 degree bend in the hole in the uh, in the wire and then pop it into the hole with a little dab of CA glue. We can pop it in like so, and then we'll put all the other ones so they all line up nicely next to that one. So cut them to the appropriate length so they look nice and tidy. We glue the header. Uh, exhaust manifolds in place as well. And there we go. I just want all these to line up nice and neat. Like I say, offer it up, grab your snips, cut it to length, bend it over, glue it in place, job done. Nice and easy, really. Quite a satisfying thing to do. Maybe one day I'll do them in firing order. I know it's odds down one side, even down the other. But it really doesn't bother me all that much. But I know a few people like to be uh, particular on getting that firing order right. So you're probably watching right now cursing me. And it's fine. You can do that. And there we go. Just slide it in. Ooh, uh. Nice and simple. Repeat that for all the rest of them. And there we go. There's our wired engine. Happy with that. And now I'm just doing something I can't remember what I'm doing. Two seconds. I'm drilling something. I think it's the coil. It is. It's the coil. I remember now. I zoomed in to get this shot and cut off the uh, shot of me editing the uh, drill on the coil. But there's the coil in place. Where it needs to be, and then we'll just bend over our lead for this, measure it up roughly, roughly cut it to length. Little dab of CA glue can go on this. Just have a little bit of a test fit first. Yep, fits fine. Take it out, little dab of glue, and that's that in place as well. There we go. Now we can get our carburetor in place. Again, this is handy, make sure it goes the correct way. Pop it in, and then the air cleaner. I did contemplate painting the air cleaner black, and thought, you know what? We'll just give it a good wash. And there we go. There's our engine mostly built. We've got our steering rack in place. A few dabs of glue on the engine mounting points. Obviously, the steering rack falls off. Has to, doesn't it? Quite tight fit on the engine, to be honest, so it's not surprising it does. Need to give all the engine a wash. I'm going to get it all assembled and in place, and then highly thin some Tamiya Panaline wash and give it all a wash. But with the two front locating points in, we can push the rear in. And then we can get our suspension in. So there's our springs going in. I'll put a little dab of glue in the locating points. Like so. And then a few dabs, we can put our subframe 
over the top. Look at your instructions. Obviously, we modified this for the lower stance. So it might not look as pretty as it should. Works function over prettiness. So I'm going to go with prettiness. What a great word. Function over beauty. That will do. Make sure it's all glued symmetrical and even. And then we're going to put a few dabs of glue on the locating points where it will attach to the chassis itself. Or well, the floor pan, I'll call it. I'm probably getting all the names mixed up here, what all the different countries call it. To me, this is the chassis. The other piece is the floor pan. I don't know what everybody calls it, so I can't cater for everybody. It's one of those things. But like I said, we're going to get it all glued in place, and we'll add a wash later on when we get everything uh, ready to go. I just want to get all this glued in place, make sure it all lines up. So there's four locating points, two at the front, two at the back. So they're glued in and pushed in fully home. The front, I found, need a little bit of glue to hold it to the, uh, the front frame at the very front. So I get all these locating points in place in the front and rear. They are quite tight, so it might need a little bit of a push. Like so. There we go. That's that in. And then at the front, it's just a little bit springy, so I pulled it back off. I'm going to put the tiniest little dab on the top of the rails. And then push it down so it holds it front. And then we'll grab a little bit of kicker on a micro brush. Touch it to it and get it glued in place. So you might find you need a touch more. If you do, just put it in. Don't go mad. You don't want this all splurging out the side because as soon as you add kicker to it, it's going to go white. So you want to keep as much of it as you can hidden. And then with that all glued in place, we can get our exhaust in as well. Exhaust lines are beautiful on this. Now, I haven't put the tailpipes on. I don't like the standard tailpipes in the kit, so... I'm probably going to do similar ones that I did on the GTX, just like straight out, round, larger diameter pipes. <clears throat> I need to have a look through my metal box first, see what pipes I've got. But we'll figure this out later. I'll probably get all the chassis on the car so I can see how far they need to stick out first. But the exhaust mounting really positively. There's some nice mounting points there right at the back, about a third of the way along, and it lines up perfect with the headers. So, absolutely spot on. So, a little bit fiddly to do, but nice and secure mounting where they do glue on. Now, obviously, we have test fitted the chassis before. We've had it on with the body on. Um, we know the wheel stance looks about right. So, we know that's fine. So, after today, what we're going to do is the interior and then all the glass... Uh, the lights and that were not far off finishing, so it'll be finished in the next part. So looking forward to getting this one done, and I can't wait to see the rest of the Chevelles. All different colours, all different levels of out the box, Pro Street, completely custom. There's even a Transformer one brewing by Frank, which is going to be epically cool if he pulls that off. Uh, for me, I've gone quite vanilla. Mine's just kind of stock with different rims on and lowered. Um... But, you know, each to their own. I get enjoyment out of doing things like that, as other people do making the pro streets. So, John Wisner actually sent me the parts from the 67 uh, AMT Chevelle, the pro street. Uh, the chassis, the wheels, the wheelie bars, the rear diff, rear suspension, that. So, I can revisit this build and make a pro street version of Chevelle, which I'd really like to do earlier today. So, thank you very much, John. Much appreciated, buddy. Uh, with the prop shaft in place, we can get the rear uh, differential with the suspension that we lowered in place as well. Uh, and again, you know, all fits absolutely perfect, even modified, fits in absolutely spot on. And uh, as I was saying before, I just can't wait to see all the different versions, all the different variants, colours, modifications. We're going to get some really, really cool stuff. So, yeah, really looking forward to seeing this build come together. Still loads of time left. There's like a month left on the build. Um... Well, is it a month? Yeah, yeah, it is a month. Exactly a month. So, really looking forward to seeing what people do with these. Um, on the back end, we've got the shocks in place. Just a couple of dabs of glue. Uh, they locate on the tub itself, and there's just a little point at the back where it just pushes in. And there we go. That's where we're at today. Chassis, engine, and running gear all done. This is where we're going to leave this part today, and we'll be back for part three very soon, in which we'll get this project finished.
Okay, so here we are, that's where we're at today. Nothing really exciting and spectacular, but work that needed doing anyway. And once we get a wash on it, it'll tone everything down and add a bit more detail to it. But we'll do that in part three. Have finally decided on my wheel colour. I've done it in. You have to wait till next time. Um, and yeah, so in part three, we've got to polish all the body. Well, flat it back, polish it, paint the wheels, paint the interior, detail the interior, bring it all together, the glass work, all the lights, etc. Chrome work is obviously done. We did it in this. Uh, so not a huge amount of work to do for part three. And then we can move on to new projects because this completely clears the bench. The Lancia is finished. The Lancia model factory hero kit is finished. Um, I've got my alpha model on the go. I do have a new project. I'm waiting on paint though. And uh, I'm going to pick a new plastic kit as well. No more model factory hero kit till after new year. I'm waiting on spare parts for it because there are a few broken parts in the kit. Um, they've got to be specially cast for me, so hopefully they won't take too long. Uh, but I'm going to pick a, I picked the uh, Honda Civic Type R from Alpha Models to do in beautiful sunset yellow. It's going to look fantastic. I think it's sunset yellow, Phoenix yellow, the special edition one they released. Um, and I'm going to pick a plastic kit, which I've already shortlisted a few. Um, yes, I've shortlisted a few, so we'll see what happens there. So, yeah, this is all I've got on the bench at the minute really is it's, it's weird i'm used to having so much there this is the only project and it's nearly done so there'll be two brand new projects soon and that epic 12 scale model fatty ferrari 250 gto after new year which i'm really looking forward to finishing lance is up there look it's been moved now as well this display case up there i can see it. it's nice and secure don't worry it's going nowhere it's all screwed down to that wooden shelf it's going nowhere and uh, yeah, so lots of exciting things coming up near the end of the year. I'll do a year in review video and I'm looking forward to what I'm going to do in 2023. Lots of plans on what I want to build. Whether we get to them is a different matter, but there's a few kits I've been putting off for a while. And after building the model Fashion Hero, there's no kit out there now that you can't build. I'll tell you now, if you build one of those, not a plastic kit, whatever, it's a piece of cake. It really is. Um, but yeah, that's where we are today. This will be finished in the next part, which will be coming up very soon. I've already been working on it. I've got some footage filmed already. Uh, and like I say, we can start the Type R, which is a patron exclusive build, unfortunately. So you have to be a patron to watch that. But the next plastic model build will be public, as will the model factory who are building in the new year as well. There we are. Any questions or comments, pop them down below. Make sure you sub to the channel, click the bell notification to notify the latest videos. Give the video a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you feel the need to. And leave a comment. Love reading all your comments. Your feedback is immense. And if you want to become a supporter, there's a Patreon me link down below. A PayPal me and a buy me a coffee link as well if you want to do a one-off. Become a patron. Pick the appropriate tier. You can get two week early access on the videos. Access to exclusive uh, patron build, which will always be one-off. Every, uh, every build will be an exclusive one. Uh, two week early, sorry, two week early access, exclusive monthly live stream. You can be added to a supporter only group on Facebook, a supporter only messenger group on Facebook as well, and you keep these videos going. I couldn't do this without you, and uh, and that's it. Loads of links in the description down below. Uh, so go down there and have a look if you want anything ISM, UMP, me related, the group builds, the live show, my Etsy stores down there, some are built models, and there's an email address to get in touch with me as well if you wish. Enjoy the rest of your day. The next video you see, this will be like Santa's Grotto because it's getting its decorations put up today. It's the last day of November. So for the first tomorrow, because I'll live stream every day, my decorations are going up. And it looks like Santa's whorehouse. That's all I'm going to say. Enjoy the rest of the day, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.